Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. This is episode 4 of the Paint Desk Ramblings, and tonight's episode will be about my own hobby journey. I've talked a little bit about this before, but uh, this will be a real deep dive into it, where I will go uh, talk about how I got into the hobby when I was about 9 years, nine years old, and how I have grown with it and all the milestones. It will probably be in quite fine de detail, so it could be a long episode, and uh, it will probably be one of the most rambling episodes yet, um, because I will go through uh, from memory mostly. I haven't prepared that much. So, <coughs> strap yourself in, grab a, a brush and some minis, and we will dive right into it. But first, I will shine the hobby spotlight on my own desk. I am continuing with my vermin swarm and the sketching. This time I'm working on the sheaf and the, the uh, magister of my vermin swarm warband for skirmish campaigns. And also a uh, third plebeian with a blunderbuss. Um, I'll share a picture what they look like now, and I'll share another picture when I'm finished. Uh, the miniatures are, uh, as before, from Dra Dragon Claw Miniatures. I'll uh, post some links in the, in the description, so you can check them out if you want to. I, I will also go through some of the news that we've had this week. We saw the new uh, Errata drop. Um, it clarified a lot, a lot of things, um, a lot of smaller things, um, with how well written the rules of the Ninth Age are, with so many iterations, uh, there's really not much that, uh, that much to, to touch, uh, touch upon and improve, but um, there are a few little bits and pieces here and there. So in this up, uh, update, I think I've go gone through it and I've identified what I think are the most important changes. So I would say um, that those are the clarifications on uh, when dangerous, uh, dangerous strain tests are taken or when the, the casualties are uh, removed from the dangerous strain test. That has been a bit unclear in the rules. Most of the time it's not that important, but when it is, it's really good to have it all crystal clear. So that's nice. Um, <coughs> they've also done some clarifications about uh, tall and towering presence. Those two model rules. About how they interact with cover when they are... Uh, when, when a unit cont contains mixed models. So basically, if more than half of the unit has, or the models in a unit uh, has either of these rules, the whole uh, boundary rectangle or um, unit boundary, is it called, um, counts as tall or town presence. So that's good to know. Um, They've also clarified that Whispers of the Whale doesn't stack. Um, previously you could, if you cast multiples on a single target, they suffered minus one discipline for each spell, uh, but now you can't do that. I think there was only one instance where you could actually achieve this uh, with the Vampire Covenant and a bounce spell that wasn't really that, wor that, that worthwhile. But um, it's good to have it uh, clarified. It was a bit unclear before. Usually these things don't uh, are designed not to stack, so it, it made sense. Um, next is the last I think is the uh, uh, mammoth hunter uh, in the Ogre Khan's army. Uh, when these are join joined to units of saber tooths. Sabertooth Tigers, uh, they can, cannot be stomped. Previously they 
could be, which was a bit strange. strange. Um, it was a, a bug in the rules, basically. So that's fi that's fixed now. In other news, they've also released a mission statement from the exec executive board. I won't go through it in the in detail or much at all, really. Um, it's a lot of text, um, but it could be well worth your read if you're interested in that. So check that out if you want to. I'll provide links to both of these news items down below. So with that out of, out of the way, let's start with the main topic. Um, so as I said, I will be going from memory mostly so things can be a bit jumbled. Um, the order probably won't be entirely correct. And there are, th are things that I've forgotten, most certainly, and things that I don't remember the, r the right way. But um, I'll do my best and uh, try to give you the story um, in some sort of semblance of order. So, my ta tale begins with my brother, actually. Um, he and some friends uh, got into Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy Battles, more exact, exactly. And they started painting, painting miniatures, collecting them, and um, later also using them in games. Um, on my ninth or tenth birthday, can't remember exactly which one, I got my first own kit as well. My brother had started collecting Empire and I got a Goblin Wolf Chariot for the Oaks and Goblins faction. So that was my first ever miniature. And I painted it up. For some reason we had gotten the strange no notion that when pa painting you had to wait a full day between each layer of paint. So it was really, really slow at the beginning. But I started cheating and uh, cut down on the waiting time bit by bit and I couldn't notice any difference so it seemed okay. Uh, so it, uh, it, it sped up. Um, and I finished my first miniature. Um, in preparation for this show I have dug out a lot of my older miniatures and taken pictures of them so I will share them with you on the screen. Um, my This very first miniature of mine, it was the chariot itself, it's, it was later recycled into a pump wagon, a snotling pump wagon. So the chariot, chariot itself is no more. But I saved one of the archers from the, of the crewmen and a wolf. So the, those should be, appear, be appearing on your screen. So, the next kit I got was not long after, I think, and that was a box of common common orc boys. And these I assembled and painted up. Um, I didn't have a clue about the game, so I, I just assembled them in cool ways. So there was all kinds of different weapon loadouts and they didn't rank up at all and uh, things of that nature. Um, but I had fun with it and I painted them up. Um, I also made a the weird mistake of putting the uh, mask of the champion upside down on the champion's face. Um, I didn't read the instructions but I thought it looked good that way. So I did it. Uh, it's, I didn't take any picture of that, but I'll see what I can if I can dig something up. <coughs> so um, I think the Christmas same year, <coughs> me and my brother got the 
6th edition um, starter set for Warhammer Fantasy because it contained both Empire and Orcs and Goblins. So I took one half and my brother, brother the other. Uh, and I got a lot more miniatures to work with. Um, I can't remember exactly when, but my brother started uh, getting a bit more interested in, in the painting process. I, I, I always enjoyed the painting and I took great care in it. Um, I, I was <laughs> really quite proud of the those first miniatures I painted, um, picking out all the little details. details. I know, knew nothing about highlights and such, so they were very flat, but they were neat at least. But my brother started getting interested in more advanced painting and found out about inks and advised me to start using them especially on the skin of my green skins and after much convincing I um, started using dark green ink on the skin um, so I went back and, and added that to all of my orcs and my goblins um, previously I just painted the skin in goblin green and called it a day but now they got a little bit, a bit more depth I've got a few pictures of orcs from that era I also started experimenting more and more with conversions one such was a mutant orc that I was really pr proud with so it was just one of those orcs from the starter, ki starter kit that I had given an extra arm from the normal orc uh, orc boys box so it was a three armed orc um, that I was really happy with and considering I didn't use any green stuff or some, such, such things I'm quite happy with the, the conversion even now looking back, back at it it's, it looks decent um, used glue just to you know, try and blend the the arm into the socket basically um, I also I didn't play the game at all at this point too. But I distinctly remember that I, I got the book from my brother, the Ox and Goblins book. So I started looking at the rules. And I decided to make <laughs> my own rules, homebrew stuff for these mutant orcs. Um with so basically yes they could have um, one more equipment option basically so they got one more attack and could have some interesting combos of weapons <laughs> it never really turned into anything because I as I said I didn't play the game even um, but I continued painting uh, I, I remember I painted some um, Goblin Wolf Riders uh, continue, continue with all the orcs in the star kit, the chariot, and a, an orc boss on a boar that I have a picture of. Um, my brother uh, took a course at Games Workshop to learn the game and to learn painting better. And I think the most important thing he took away from that was he learned how to base. Um, a really simple method really but I'm pretty much using it still to this day just glue down uh, sand on the base before priming the model and then paint up the gravel and, and add, add some static grass at the end uh, so we, we bo both thought that looked really nice so I started doing it too um, going back over the mo models I painted previously and adding base uh, basing 
I re remember doing it on the bullfighters distinctly because I covered no wait no that was later <laughs> sorry um, as I said things are jumbled I added basis uh, basing to all uh, to pretty much all my models so. um, and I kept pa painting um, I got some black orc models that I decided to, to paint in a slightly darker tone of green so I used snot green as a base instead of goblin green and I think that turned out really nice at the time at least they have a slightly darker hue of uh, skin <laughs> I remembered I don't know if it was an official fluff but I, I considered it that uh, orcs who spent time in the sun got paler and more yellow and also more, more crazy so the iron orcs they were dark and disciplined common orcs were a little bit paler a little bit more yellow in the skin and the feral orcs were almost yellow of skin and completely crazy um, and this I, I kept using through a for a long while um, I suppose still to this day um, yeah uh, the uh, uh, the black orcs also had another interesting painting challenge because I wanted their armor to be a bit darker as well I didn't want it uh, I wanted it steel uh, still metallic in color but not as bright as the other armors and weapons that I had painted um, the thought never occurred to me that I could mix colors so instead I used a strange strange method of I, I painted the armor in bolt gun metal and then I just applied black over that and wiped most of it away with my thumb um, leaving some black paint in the recesses and overall tinting the whole thing a little bit darker darker so that <laughs> that worked surprisingly well I'd say um, yeah. next on the journey I would say was that I started um, to notice that um, my friends at school also were into the hobby I can't remember exactly when this when we found each other so to speak but I too painted miniatures and such the only problem was that most of them were into 40k I was into fantasy so we yeah we couldn't uh, we could have sh of course share our painting work and such but uh, even if we wanted to play together we couldn't because we used different games so. but eventually we decided to take a, the same course at Games Workshop that my brother had taken to learn how to play the game and how to paint basically uh, they had a really nice offer you for 400 crowns I think Swedish crowns you got the course I think it was four Sundays over which you learned the game and painting and that at the end of it you also got a carrying bag for your miniatures worth 400 crowns so in the end the course was really free but of course it was a great way for games workshop to get more people into the into the hobby um, by this time I had also lured one, my cousin into collecting uh, lizardmen 
and a, uh, and a childhood friend of mine who was one year older into collecting dwarf, dwarfs. So I convinced those two to join the uh, course at Games Workshop as well. So I think we were five people in total. Three fantasy and two 40k players. Maybe three 40k players. Um, I'm not sure. We went there. Um, <coughs> and we had to bring our own miniature to paint. I brought a simple little goblin, um, common goblin, with a spear that I painted up. And that model I have kept unchanged since then. Um, while the, uh, the other goblins in his units, uh, unit have been repainted at least once, but I think at least partly twice. But I painted him up at the store and I learned how to play the game. And I got really motivated for the hobby. And I started painting up the rest of the goblin in, in his unit. At the same time I painted up some grotlings. I have distinctly, re distinctly remember that I uh, painted five goblins and then one base of, of uh, snotlings, they were called. Not snotlings, so one base of snotlings. After each five, batch of five goblins. So. Just to keep things varied. Um, and I also applied my new skills at older mo models, so I repainted pretty much all the skin of my orcs and a lot of the, their clothing, added highlights, dry brushes and such. And, and I, I also expanded my collection. I think I got a a Doom Diver somewhere around this point. And I think maybe around this point I also did my trolls. I had a troll model from long before this this um, course that I painted in very traditional colors with gray skin and blue scales but it, it got lost somewhere on lo along the way uh, but I had five new, new troll models that I painted up I converted them a little bit beforehand I was a bit obsessed with converting every little, little thing to make it all unique So my trolls were converted uh, to have some armor. Yeah, I, I actually sculpted, I think this one was one of the first time that I really sculpted um, things with using green stuff. So I sculpted a helmet on one of them. And I had some armor on others and such. I think around the, si around the same time I also did a chariot, a new goblin wolf chariot. Um, that I also where I also sculpted a helmet on one of, one of the crewmen, a chariot that also uh, it was quite funny. I wanted it to have a character on top, uh, but that meant you still ha could have a full set of crewmen, but they didn't fit on the chariot. So I decided to convert it to have the two of the crewmen. Or the uh, hanging off the sides of the chariot basically and that looked, looked really good the only problem was that I couldn't fit the wheels after I put the, the crew members on uh, on that way so I instead uh, converted the chariot to be a sled 
using some toothpicks and, and green stuff and some um, some uh, wire steel wire I think um, so th those were some uh, early conversions anyway back to the tr to the trolls they were con converted to have armor as I said and they you know, <coughs> were also converted to have um, the or original models had uh, I would say br broken ears they were rugged and, and a bit damaged uh, but I, I mended those ear basically I don't know why I just wanted it different I suppose uh, and I also added some scales to their spine that stood up from uh, from the spine uh, a bit like um, a stego stegosaurus I think they, those dinosaurs were called and was quite happy with those uh, trolls I painted them up uh, brown instead of blue in the scales and I call them rock trolls instead of stone trolls um, and I, <laughs> I I wanted to make my own rules for them a special upgrade of, of uh, the trolls instead of the stone troll but it was basically the same but it also got plus one leadership which uh, of course is good on models that are stupid but yeah one more leadership from I think from uh, four to five or five to six it didn't, doesn't really matter um, but I was a bit obsessed with that I recall um, I had by this time of course learned the game at Games Workshop but I didn't really have anyone to play with them. My friends at school um, played 40k. My cousin um, was a bit far away. Not that far away, but still, it was a bit more complex, uh, and he didn't wasn't that much into the hobby anyway. My friends were more more engaged in it. In it. And the uh, childhood friend that I had recruited uh, also wasn't that interested in in the game. We we, we played a few times, um, <laughs> but I was really a sore loser back then. I think I'm better now at, lo at least. Um, so I guess I wasn't that enjoyable to play with. Them. Um, but at some at some point. I decided to start playing at my Games Workshop store, which was about an hour's trip away um, by bus and train. So every Thursday, I think, every other or so at least, um, I went there to play. And it started off, they, they had a ranking system, I remember, based on the Space Wolves ranking system. The last stage was Long Fang, something about blood, and yeah, I don't remember the, uh, the, the middle one, I think. Uh, I can't really recall. Um, and the ra ranking system basically meant that you could play with pro progressively larger armies. So I started playing with 500 point armies, and then moved on to uh, 750 and eventually a thousand point armies and this was the first time that I ever painted miniatures and converted miniatures for the pur distinct purpose of, of using them in games which was a bit different than just doing things because I liked the look of it but I, I enjoyed this too I converted up a uh, goblin shaman riding a wolf because it was uh, quite useful to have a quick little magic wielder on the table 
Uh, I think it was during this time I also that converted up that Shariatu I mentioned that beca became his sled because it was really point e efficient to pu put a Goblin Chief on Shariatu and became quite hitty that little thing um, I remember it was especially useful against the Elves but I should also, also mention that I think uh, really the first time I went there I was told that I uh, didn't play the right game anymore basically uh, because I used the 6th edition rules but the 7th edition rules had just been released so I had to relearn the game a little bit but yeah <laughs> the difference wasn't much um, you ha had to be a little bit wider of units to gain rank bonus and the magic paths were a bit different and yeah, some really small changes but I also had to buy a new book for the Oxen Goblins I think at least after a while um, the games were, were, were fun I suppose I wouldn't have continued doing it otherwise but looking back at it it was really quite unbalanced. Facing chaos, it was just a nightmare because they, and there was at least one guy there, there who always brought a unit of five knights of corn who could just charge anything, destroy most of the unit, and uh, you couldn't didn't even get to fight back because your front rank had been destroyed, and you broke and they run you down. I had only, uh, had only one tool to deal with that unit and that was the Foot of Gork spell. But it, it really wasn't that fun to play against them. And high, high elves were also a nightmare. They had their always strike first rules, so even if you charged them, they, stri they swung before you, kill your front rank, you couldn't strike back, and then you, you fled and they chased you down. But the Shariot was really useful in this, because impact hits were still before the elves. So that was nice. Let's see. Uh, I also painted up a an orc boss for this specific purpose of gaming here. He had a great weapon. Uh, it was converted from a really old Oxen Goblin model. I think it was one of the big gun models from big gun models from way before my time. Um, can't really remember where I got it from. Some internet that auction, perhaps. Um, he had a spear originally, but I gave him a large shopper made from plastic card but I, I thought it looked really well um, I used him with a great weapon of course then yeah I remember, remember his kit distinctly he had a an enchanted item called Castle's Battle Brew, I think, which gave him, at, at the beginning of the game, you roll the die, and you gain, gain some special rules, depending on the result. Uh, some, sometimes it, yeah, it, it was really bad, you gain stupidity, and you can do things for half, the, half your turns, basically. Uh, you could get, gain hat hatred and get a real significant boost in combat, which was great with the, with the great weapon. Um, you could get frenzy so that you were un uncontrollable and such such things. And I also gave him a ward save, I think, for 30 points. Some hat, I think it was called. Hmm. Yes, um... The next big step uh, 
I would say was when I was um, contacted by a um, a person I barely knew. He went to the same school, but I, ha but I ha hadn't ever really talked to him. He was one year older. Um, Um, but he contacted me and my brother, he had heard about uh, us playing the game, and he did as well, he played Sk Skaven, and he invited me and my brother over to a friend of his uh, to play. And we went, um, we, ch we, we uh, <laughs> had to really <coughs> scramble to get uh, armies large enough because they were playing um, full sized 2000 points armies or even larger I think and we uh, had only played 1000 points armies before, before that but using every single miniature we had we both managed to get large enough armies and so we went uh, and we played we had to use every single thing in our collection so I used the snotlings as well which were rubbish back then absolute rubbish um, I th distinctly remember that we were trashed by these guys but we had fun still um, at, least, at least I did. My brother sort of dro dropped out of the hobby bit by bit, g tried to get back in a few times but never really stuck. Um, but I kept at it. I, uh, I don't remember when but I started my second army, really my third army. At some point, uh, I think this might shock a, a few people who know me. <coughs> Excuse me. But the first miniatures from another army than Oaks and Goblins I ever got to were elves. Uh, wood elves. I got a box of them for Christmas once. And I painted up a few of them, but I never really uh, completed it. I, I, for some reason, I wanted to go with a winter theme on the wood elves. But I had the really stupid idea to um, use yellow. In their color palette, their color palette, because some for some reason I thought yellow was a really good winter color, and yellow was also really difficult to paint, so it looked absolutely awful, and it didn't look w wintry at all. At least when I look back at it now, I suppose I like it like it somewhat back then, <coughs> but I managed to dig up one of those. Uh, glade archers or whatever they were called and uh, it should be on your screen right now um, that I have no clue when that was in in time relative to the, to all the other things and the uh, second army that I started for real because this hardly counts was a Britannia force and I got the starter kit and some, some, so some knights and some peasants and some Pegasus knights some I think extra um, that I painted up um, again I had, I had really tr a lot of trouble with yellow which was a shame uh, but I persisted and um, painted up a few units of these actually. 
but it uh, sort of died out. Um, the last unit I finished were some Grey Knights, which weren't half, ba half bad really, um, but it never really caught on. I do have a lot of models still in boxes though, and do plan to someday take it up again, um, but don't really know when. We will see. Um, <clears throat> with my new uh, gaming pals, I was also convinced to go to a tournament. So I went. The first one I went to was in 2014. It was in Westeros. Westeros. Um, so I... Uh, how old was I? Um, math. No, 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 that can't be right. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. better. <laughs> uh, my first tournament was in 2009. So I was 16 or 15. I think it was 15 uh, because I my train ticket costed only five five Swedish crowns because I was traveling in the company of another an adult. So uh, one of those pals that I was playing with was a bit older, a fair bit older. So I got my train ticket really cheap because of that. Uh, but we went to Westeros, and in in preparation for this, um, I had to learn the Swedish comp system. So I, I had played a few, quite a lot of games before this, but now I had to use the comp system as well to comp my army list. And uh, that was really, really complex back then. I can't really understand how I was conv convinced to to actually go through with this. <coughs> but I suppose I enjoyed the, enjoyed the challenge. Um, the armies I used were really, really <laughs> low powered, I guess, using big blocks of infantry and such were quite rubbish back then and it showed in the comp it had a really really high comp value which meant that it, it was a tame army basically um, but I went to my first tournament and this is something uh, that I'm quite proud of actually uh, I have a a uh, an Excel document on my in my Dropbox where I keep all my tournament army lists. So I'm looking at it right now. What I brought to this first tournament, and <coughs> yeah, I had that uh, wolf uh, r wolf riding shaman that I had converted up. I had the, the chariot. With a sheaf on top of it, or a big boss, I think they were called. But the general of the army was something that I had completed quite recently, I think. So it was a savage orc war boss on a boar who went with a unit of trolls. Strangely enough, I had no other boar riders in the army and he had a sword that was really funny he got an extra attack and an extra strength for every enemy character model that was within 12 inches quite a large bubble and I had loads of fun with that uh, back then you also used hidden hidden lists 
Um, so you didn't know what your uh, opponents had for weapons. And I, the the boss and his trolls, they uh, overran into a unit of Empire Knights. Um, which could... No, I think it was only the, the boss actually. Not the trolls. The trolls, the, the, the trolls wouldn't have no issue going through through the knights, but the boss had because there were no char characters near, so he he was only strength four, I think even, uh, and couldn't go through their armor. But he still got a little bit worried about uh, my general being out there, so to to aid his. Uh, his knights, he flew over two captains on Pegasus's into uh, the nearby area and all of a sudden the boss got uh, two extra attacks and two more strength and he just cleaved through those knights like it was nothing. So that was fun. Yeah, so that was the first tournament and I continued go going to tournaments and I continued painting but much like last time I upped my gaming uh, Games Workshop came around and released a new edition edition of the game so 8th eight, eight edition happened and on the grand scheme of things I thought that was incredibly great yes wonderful um, the new rules for with step up and steadfast and those things uh, horde formations it meant that my preferred st play style of of infantry suddenly was viable uh, so in in 2010 I went to um, a tournament that used one of the, the first tournament in Sweden I think that used 8th edition again with my Oxen Goblins and I had a, a Savage Orc Shaman as general who was riding on a Wyvern it was absolutely crazy but super super fun to play and he had a kit that gave him a total of three atta attacks and for each hit he caused the enemy had, had to take a, a leadership test and if they failed the model died straight out which uh, against most foes didn't do much because they had good good leadership but against some monsters and such that didn't have so good <laughs> it was amazing uh, but the tournament was really insane. People b brought tech lists and uh, magic, magic users in crazy proportions. This was before there was any comp at all for this game. For 8th edition. So people could just go nuts. And I remember one game I faced tech lists of the high, uh, high, high elves. And he single-handedly annihilated my army in one spell of purple sun. He killed uh, the wyvern, uh, the battle sun bear, and half my uh, my big guns. And yeah, it was just crazy. And then he got back just as many di dice as he had used, or even more, and just continued casting and destroying everything. So that was horrendous. But I still had fun. Um, <clears throat> During this time I had also started a third army, I guess. My Vampire Covenant army. Um, it was started... The first time I started it was quite long ago actually. I don't remember exactly when. But I painted up some, some zombies and a corpse cart 
that was that was about it. Um, but then me and my new friends started a tale of painting a escalation league, and I uh, picked uh, Vampire Covenant. And I painted up some skeletons and ghouls and several things and the army quickly expanded. This was still back in 7th um, edition and I had <laughs> this ID with the army that it, it was led by female von Karstein vampire Ludmila von Karstein who used um, who was pa powerful with ma magic and a decent fighter and when the 8th edition ca came I got really really excited with this armor because I could um, there was a, a vampire power that you could take that gave your wizard access to all the spells from a chosen path and I wanted to use shadow shadow on my general um, because it had such a cool attribute was that, that was one of the new things in 8th edition the, each <coughs> the spell path had an attribute that was costed each time you cast a spell from that lore. Uh, and I, when I got the book, I went through all the paths, <laughs> trying to find which I thought was the absolute coolest. And that was Shadow, hands, hands down. Uh, each time you cast a spell, you were allowed to switch places with the caster and another character model in within 18 inches I think um, and that just seemed so much fun so I made an army an army list that I played maybe once or twice with friends I didn't have all the miniatures yet so I couldn't take it to tournaments um, and the idea was to have a lot of char characters in the army um, that were highly specialized against a certain target <coughs> and then use her magic to switch them around so that they were all in perfect position to uh, to face that those targets so she herself was kitted out to be an absolute beast beast against um, common troops she had a lot of attacks at strength 5 and a high armor save. No ward save though, so elite things could <coughs> kill her quite easily. But using the the uh, shadow magic, I could ki keep her out of harm's way. But I didn't really get to try this ar army um, much, unfortunately. But we will get to that. Too. Because first we have an, a really important milestone. I went to another tournament in Westeros. A third tournament. <coughs> it's the only place I have been so far, uh, thus far. For tournaments. Um, <coughs> this time it was a tag team tournament. So I had a... Um, a friend that I played with, uh, this game player who had uh, introduced me to larger games, and I decided that that I wanted to take an a special item from the uh, common rule book of the eighth edition uh, rules, which was Wizarding Hat which turned the model into a wizard with a random lore and it also gave him stupidity and it was super expensive so you couldn't take any, any other things 
<coughs> Excuse me. So basically, it was a wor really worthless item. But I wanted to, to take it, and I put it on a goblin. And I, to try to make the best of it, I put that goblin on a spider. And I found an old conversion that I had made as a mount for an orc. Um, that was just a strange spider beast thingy made from uh, um, a boar's body, some turned bits, and the green stuff. Um, so I put him on there and used him at the tournament and he was he was great fun really just amazing um, he became my mascot and I've used him in almost all tournaments since then he is mad at uh, and I took his name as my internet avatar and all of that stuff so it became a really important point in my hobby journey. But speaking of that maybe made me rem remember something that I had forgotten to mention. And that was b back before I uh, <coughs> met this Skaven player. Uh, when I my friends played 40k and I didn't. I actually went to the dark side basically, so I, I started collecting 40k for a short while. So I got a, a Imperial Guard army that I painted in red and uh, white. And I imagined them at a, a red planet with snow. I suppose a bit like the the planet <coughs> from uh, where the final battle is at in uh, the last Jedi Star Wars film, but uh, yeah, not that cool, cool as cool, I suppose. But I I collected a small force, a lot of infantry, one of those walkers, sentinel, sentinels, I think they were called, a tank. Um, and some more in infantry. <laughs> a curious, curious thing about this is, I decided to uh, be quite wary with my the skin tones that I painted. So it was proper PC and representation and all, all of that long before that was at least <coughs> appeared in my world. But I, I f yes, felt felt it was appropriate. So there's some some wearing skin skin colors among those old miniatures of mine. The sergeant that you can see in the picture uh, was entered into a painting competition. I, if I remember correctly, it didn't do well, but I was happy with it. Uh, he's just killed that Tyranid. I actually had plans and miniatures to start a Tyranid army as well, but that never really happened. Still got some minis in some drawers, I think. But anyway, that was a <coughs> complete side note. And as I warned at the begin beginning, um, things are jumbled. So, back to my tournament going. Um, I used the Wizarding Hat and Mad Hat. And I had a great time, as I said. He didn't do that good in mo games mostly. Um, but uh, during that first tournament, in one game, I re remember that he got the Purple Sun, which had uh, decimated my ar whole, whole army some tournaments before. Um, or in, in the last tournament, actually, really. 
and he managed to do the same thing to my uh, oppo opponent then um, eating up a ho whole unit a death star of uh, Saurians so that was fun he earned up his point I think fivefold that single game so it was worth taking him um, especially since our, our army really, really didn't, didn't have anything else that could deal with that Death Star unit so that was nice uh, the next tournament was a <coughs> another tag team tournament but this time in Uppsala and here me and my friend did something special he usually play, played Skaven but he had also gotten a Oaks and Goblin army by this time so he used uh, we used uh, both used a, an Oaks and Goblin army and uh, it was right around this time that the 8th edition army book for Oaks and Goblins was released and they decided at the tournament that you could choose if you wanted to use the new one or the old one we decided that one of us was using the old one and the other me uh, no I, I was using the old one and my friend was using the new one <laughs> which was insane um, but really really fun uh, yeah. um, next tournament again was tag team back at Investros uh, this was the first time I used uh, Vampire Covenant in a game um, This was still using the seventh edition uh, rules of the army book for uh, Vampire Covenant. The core rules were eighth, of course. Um, I think the only tournament I ever went to using the seventh book of. Um, Vampire Covenant because pretty soon their new book 8th edition book was released and that was a really low point in hobby, hobby in my hobby because that book it didn't sit well with me um, it removed a lot of the cu customization that you could <coughs> take on vampires um, but more impo importantly, the customization that was available was so horribly balanced that there was really only one build that was decent, that was good with va vampires. And that was a Ultra Kill Super Blender Lord, which of course was good, but it wasn't what I wanted to play. I wanted to play my. Um, my mixed arms vampire who c could cast spells and <coughs> fight a little bit at the same time and yeah use po lore shadows and all of that but it just wasn't possible um, so I had to completely rethink my army and overall there was not a lot of things I liked in that book uh, but eventually I settled down to liking the corpse cards uh, they enabled a super heavy bubble playstyle where everything had to be close to the corpse card and the characters and use spells to really really enhance your, your army um, so I came up with a concept 
uh, that used a necromancer general uh, a whole lot of zombies and a lot of infantry other infantry ghouls and grave guard and just use magic to grind down pretty much any foe um, unless you were were completely surrounded and you were annihilated um, so that became a big project of mine painting the, up those, that new army the zombies was the single greatest project that I've ever undertaken I think 210 zombies in total or I guess I had 20 zombies painted from before but still a lot of zombies and I took a lot of care and dedication to all of it I painted up pretty much every zombie to a character level detail um, not the skin the skin was dry brushed and uh, rushed worked but uh, all the clothes were care carefully highlighted and yeah, it was a, lo a lot of time and a lo lot of dedication but I had fun I should al also mention that by this time uh, I think around it yeah, when I started the Vampire Covenant proje project for real Vampire Counts project project that is uh, um, I also joined the Vampire Accounts forum um, and started becoming active in that part of the hobby as well and this zombie project uh, I think was the uh, <laughs> really what what set me out and gave me an uh, identi identity of sort on the forums I was that crazy dude who painted way too much, too many zombies, and put too much uh, much dedication to it. What a, but I was happy to wear that name. Um, yeah. So um, it wasn't until let's see here. in 2014 that I actually brought a full army of Vampire Covenant to a tournament this was again uh, in Westeros and I brought this army of loads of zombies and loads of ghouls and Barrow guard and all of that and it was fun to play um, I th perhaps not so much for my opponent opponents it was just a endless grind basically facing down that much infantry but um, yeah I had fun at least uh, it was a lot of work leading up to that, po that point and seeing it all come to fruition um, before that I had gone to quite a lot of tournaments uh, around Sweden and I had painted up quite a lot of Ox and Goblins during this time as well um, I make an honorable mention of my black orcs which were probably painted quite long before this that I for some some reason decided uh, to paint in white armor or well the reason was that I figured that uh, being the most respected and wealthiest of the orcs they would display that by having white armor which would of course be quite difficult to maintain clean and such uh, for an orc so that was a show of status for them anyway <coughs> uh, yeah I should also mention that I um, st 
started making my own squeegs um, for the entries that required larger squeegs. The first was a uh, mount for a character that I sculpted from green stuff. That one I entered into a competition at Games Workshop. And I did fairly well, I think. I've entered quite a lot of units and such over the years to their uh, competitions. Um, <laughs> and I rem remember that the first time I entered, that was with, with this spider monster that later became the mount for Mad At. But at the time it was the mount for an orc. So I entered <coughs> that orc and his mount. I think I got second place. And back then they had prizes for the first place. So that real, like actual rewards, I think you got to select a a starting kit, um, a battalion uh, of miniatures to take as prize. <coughs> so that really encouraged me. And I think maybe not the year after, but the year after that, I actually managed to, to win. But by then they had uh, removed this reward, so I didn't, didn't get anything from it, except the, the honor, of course. Uh, one unit that I do remember that I won with was my Barrow Guard that I had pa painted up for my Vampire Counts Army. They were really a highlight of my painting career. I stepped it up uh, up a notch by painting a medical effect on their swords, mirror effect, um, <coughs> that I'm really quite pleased with, with still to this day. I would probably do it a bit different if I redid it today, but the technique was, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. So, back to tournament histories. Um, I went to two more uh, tournaments after this 2014 tournament, uh, where I used Empire Covenant for the first time. Um, one was a tag team, again in we Westeros. And I used Hawks and Goblins, and then I went to Gothcon. 2015, which <coughs> uh, this was during the end times of the Warmer Fantasy Battles game, <laughs> and I used my um, Savage Oak Great Shaman on Wyvern again. This time, however, his gimmick was that he was using the Lore of Undeath. So he was flying around on his wyvern and raising undead stuff all over the battlefield. That was really fun. Uh, so I, I, I brought basically both my Vampire Covenant army, Vampire Count's army and my Oaks and Goblins. So that, that was fun. Um, but in the summer of that year something happened. Um, the end times came to a conclusion and it became pretty obvious that something big was brewing within Games Workshop and people were, start, were starting to wonder if Warhammer Fantasy would remain as it was, if it would be replaced by something else. Yeah, there were a lot of things were up in the air. Uh, me and my friend, this Caven player, we decided to try something different during this time. And I don't 
remember how we got the ID or whose ID it was. But we started uh, looking at the old 6th edition army books of our armies <laughs> and we found that they were really really fun because it looked like everything was coming to an end we just figured that we'd, we'd try something out so <clears throat> uh, I mentioned that I didn't really really like the core rules of the older games where you could just destroy units on the charge too much too easily and infantry weren't good at all and all of that so we didn't want that back so what we did was we took the core rules of the 8th edition game but the army books from the 6th edition game basically basically got the best of two worlds because the core rules of 8th edition were much more balanced and the <coughs> army books of 6th edition were much more fun um, it re required some um, fudging <laughs> basically to make it to make the two rule system work together but it wasn't that diffi difficult really. Much of it was similar. But then um, what happened happened. Uh, Age of Sigmar came around and it became very apparent that Warhammer as we knew it was gone. And that uh, was of course upsetting, but at least we had found something really fun to play. Uh, our own little mix. So we weren't too worried. At least I wasn't. This game that we were playing actually um, awoken a hobbying interest in me that I hadn't ha had in quite a while. After finishing the uh, Vampire Counts Army, I didn't paint much really. But this made me really excited to continue my armies and paint new things. I started going through uh, auctioning sites to find old vampire mi miniatures from Games Workshop because they were so much better than the newer ones in my opinion and well I always wanted more vampires but they <laughs> I, I didn't find them enjoyable to play to use in games during 8th edition but with this, this combo of rules they were loads of fun to use and you all also had the different blood li bloodlines so you had a reason to have uh, several different vampires of different styles and such. So I, I went about trying to find lots of old minutes, minis. It also got me excited excited to start an empire army um, because you could use mercenaries in these rules, so you could get giants into your army. And the thought of empire armies containing giants was just too cool for me. So I started again going through the to the auctioning sites and trying to find old Empire Games Workshop mini miniatures because I thought they were much better than, than the newer ones. <coughs> but as it turned out, I wouldn't be using those for another three years really. Um, because as Age of Sigmar happened, Ninth Age also happened, and yeah, I I saw the potential quite quickly in it. We had some idea that we would try to introduce the rest of the community to this 
combo game, but once Ninth Age came around, it it yeah, felt much better to put all my efforts into into that. So I did, and um, that really uh, re sparked my interest in the in the game and the, and the hobby, and I've been painting and building a lot of more stuff since then adding to both my Oaks and Goblin army <coughs> and to my Vampire uh, Covenant army um, which is why the Empire army um, got put on a on hold for a while so it wasn't un until recently that I started painting it but I think that will do it for now um, there is of course a lot of things that have happened in Ninth Age with my hobby but I think that will be a topic for another show because I've been rambling on now for quite a while yeah we're closing in on the uh, one and a half hour mark so that will have to do, do it uh, um, I'll show you a picture of what I've painted while doing this and I finished the sketching part of the those three models and I've also started doing some touch-ups on the uh, ratchet arm mod models that I painted um, previously so there will only be a picture, picture of the of the sketching parts um, but yeah, I've gotten, gotten th some things done. I hope you have as well. And I have ho hope you have enjoyed the show. I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>